Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. It is March 5th, 2020, and this is another edition of KSO Today, brought to you, of course, by K-State Online, but really more importantly by our sponsors and People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We've got some news to talk about today um, on KSO Today, specifically around K-State having a new linebackers coach, uh, Pete Thamel, of course, of Yahoo Sports, who's done a great job. He broke both this and the Joe Klanderman officially. He was the first to tweet that out and report that, becoming K-State's new defensive coordinator. Anyway, Steve Stan, excuse me, Stenard uh, from Syracuse is his most recent stop where he was the linebackers coach at a Power 5 institution. Uh, Mr. Thamel reports will be the new linebackers coach at Kansas State. Uh, makes a lot of sense. I won't go into you know a lot more details beyond just some of the obvious stuff you can find for free uh, on him on the internet. But Derek Young has been talking on board a little bit about one of the names, some of the other names perhaps Case State was looking at here. Interviews were held, I believe, yesterday for this position. If I'm saying my days right correctly, um, and this has been or will be the hire. I expect Case State will announce it soon. Uh, most recently, he has been at Syracuse since 2017. If you're looking for the ties to Chris Kleiman and this coaching staff, you don't have to go back very far. 2014 to 16, he was the defensive coordinator at Wyoming. Prior to that, 2012 to 13, he was the linebackers coach at North Dakota State. Other stops along his career, Tulane, Ohio, Colorado State, New Mexico State, South Dakota, Nebraska, Wesleyan. He is a Nebraska graduate. I believe he played there, it looks like, from 1984 to 1987, according to his bio. Um, and that's where he was first a graduate assistant. So somebody, of course, familiar and played in the region, has coached around the region quite a bit, like I said, places like South Dakota, North Dakota State, Ohio, Colorado State. Um, So certainly the same area where perhaps you're going to see K-State's coaching staff recruit and be around, or at least has come from. And this is who you've got added to the staff. So when you look at the different moves uh, after the departure of Scotty Hazel, the defensive coordinator, it should be a lot of people who really kind of understand the system and know what they're doing already as they step into their roles. As Joe Klanderman becomes the defensive coordinator, Van Malone, of course, stays on staff, adds some some more title and responsibility, but ultimately will be continuing to coach the cornerbacks. Now you'll have a linebackers coach who is familiar with what Chris Kleiman wants to do, what Craig Bowl liked to do what this defensive system wants to do. So we'll, we'll learn more about Mr. Standard more as we go forward. As I said, Derek Young's already talking about him on the message board. Questions have been asked about his recruiting profile and that kind of thing as we start to dig out and learn that. That will be very, very interesting as, of course, I think for position coaches, that's a big part of it. Can be for coordinators too, of course. But I think with position coaches, they're going to be asked to recruit a decent amount most likely. So this will be interesting to see um, when we get an announcement, of course. And what we learn more about Mr. Stenard after that fact and how to say his name, because I say standard, I say Stenard. I think I've changed it three or four times in three minutes. So I'm looking forward to finding that out. But happy to have that news out there. Happy to know about that. We'll have more to report on that on Case and Online here very, very soon. Uh, I do want to take some time, more than I have maybe recently in shows, to talk about basketball and not just gloss over it. As K State takes another loss last night at Oklahoma State, 69 to 63. The Wildcats still just two wins. They now have more losses in the season than any individual K-State team has had. Uh, That is what it is. You know, that's a statement that you can't take lightly. And I I spoke on this, you know, podcast, this show, maybe a week or two ago about how much this season still has to matter. The results to itself to matter. I wrote a column about it. And if I'm being honest, it's gotten really no better since then. Yes, they played really hard against Kansas, but they lost. And I think last night against Oklahoma State probably played pretty hard again. A lot of credit to guys like Xavier Sneed. Cartier Jada, especially um, Dejuan Gordon, Mike McGurl, all played a bunch of minutes last night. They gave us case eight, battled foul trouble. A lot of guys played hard. I think I'll just look at those guys' minutes to give them some credit. Cartier Jada, 39 minutes. Xavier Sneed, 39 minutes. Dejuan Gordon, 36 minutes. Mike McGurl, 32. So, still people you have to credit for playing hard despite things being difficult, but a loss is a loss. Uh, five thoughts I wrote last night from the game. At least K-State got off to a better start. We've seen K-State really fall behind early. It feels like in every Big 12 game to the point where they have to dig out of a hole as they go forward. Uh, they didn't do that last night. They were up 10-5, less than halfway through the first half. Then we ended up being down three at halftime. I don't think they ever got down more than seven, uh, at least while the game was real still, really still in doubt. They may have gotten beyond uh, down more than seven in the few final few minutes. Pardon me, it's Oklahoma State kind of closed it out before K-State rallied again late. 
Um, I noticed, I think it was Jar Jar being on the board. I want to give, give credit. I do write a lot about the slow starts being an issue, but you have to also notice the finishes have been a real problem. Is this another game? Case it was up, I believe, three or four with four seven minutes left in this game and then got down by nearly 10 points down the stretch, lost by six. K-State started small again. That was note two that I wrote. Um, I just think it's interesting, but it's good. You know, with Montavious Murphy again out with injury, Xavier Sneed starts at the four for the really the second game in a row after doing so against Kansas. Uh, I'll be interested, you know, to see what happens with that going forward. If it continues, only a couple of games left, you'd think it probably would. And not a fun note to talk about, if any of these are fun after another Big 12 conference loss. But my note three was, again, uh, it's amazing, you know, that Casey had another player miss a wide open uh, dunk when they, uh, I, you know, I'm not trying to, I, I don't mind seeing guys go for stuff like that. We all cheer it like crazy when it goes. I understand it, and I'd be a bit of a hypocrite, whether it's about Cartier Jada or Xavier Sneed, if I say, hey, man, just lay that in, or hey, just take it easy. Um, so it's hard to be super critical of it, um, especially after seeing it once. And, and this is not the second guy to do it, but it's, it's pretty amazing that it, it, it happened again. This one wasn't even close to going down. And again, it turned into a basket immediately for the opposition and really hurt K-State's momentum. Um, both mistakes were just amazing to see. Uh, I thought they were handled a little bit, a little bit differently. Of course, I don't think, and maybe because they didn't have a choice with foul trouble, but when Cardi did it, we didn't really see him back on the floor much after that, if at all. Xavier Sneed played probably 30 minutes after this mistake. Um, but I'm not trying to start something there. It, it just, it just was fascinating. And it's amazing to see twice in this season that happened. And it's, it's really been probably a good descriptor of how the season has gone. I talked a little bit about how there was no real separation created by Oklahoma state in the first half. The Cowboys did create some right away in the second half. That was point for number four for me, that second half separation that case then had to rally back from back to back three pointers from Jonathan Laurent and Lindy waters did put Oklahoma state up seven with about 18 minutes still to play in this game. Bruce Weber called his timeout, unhappy with his team for leading shooters open. K-State, to its credit, got back in it, would eventually tie that score at 40-41 all before Mike McGurl had a basket to make it 43-41 with 12 minutes left. So even though K-State fell down by seven with 18 minutes left, by the by well, less than six minutes later, they're up two. They were back in this game, had a real chance, of course, to win it down the stretch, and as noted earlier, did not make plays in the closing three, four, five minutes to win this game. I noted how many minutes a lot of guys played, again, uh, both Levi Stockard and McCall Moeen battled foul trouble throughout this one, really even forcing Antonio Gordon to play stretches at the five with four guards around him. So I already talked about the minutes and laid that out and how big of an issue that was for K-State. Always appreciate the help in the postgame when I cover these games from KSU underscore fan or Jimmy, as we like to call him. And Chris Nelson, um, the things that you know I think we would take away, he literally wrote takeaways of stealing it from KSU fan is K-State's ability to turn the ball over a lot, at least turn teams over like they did against Oklahoma State. Again, doesn't really matter when K-State doesn't protect the basketball itself. That's always the note that Fan talks about for us when he's looking at K-State. You know, turnovers last night, K-State wins that battle 21-17. They get four less turnovers and points off turnovers, as Fan told us, only two points more. So you can't just turn teams over if you're going to turn it back over yourself and not take advantage. That's where K-State lost. That and not be able to shoot the basketball very well. K-State just 4 of 21 from the three-point line, 19%. K-State was very good for the foul line, 17 of 21, 81% from the foul line. And then okay from two, I guess, when you pull out the 4 of 21 from three, that means they were, what, 17 of this tough math, this quick math is, is tricky, 17 of 27. Would that be right from two? If so, that's pretty good. So K-State, yeah, shot it well from two, shot it well from the free throw line, really bad from the three-point line, did not take advantage of turnovers. Something else, if you're reading the final, I don't want to give all of it away at KSO, but I think it was really neat. Chris Nelson broke down how much K-State moved the ball uh, from one side of the floor to the other with a pass in the first half. He counted 30 possessions, dropping a couple outliers like the run-out dunk that Steve missed in K-State's possession in the last few seconds. Um, I think he said only two different times K-State changed sides of the floor with a pass on those 30 possessions. And on those possessions, K-State got good shots. When they were not doing it, they turned it over. So I'm beating the dead horse a little bit. K-State is not a good basketball team right now. Uh, Bruce Weber, uh, I think he's I think he's been somewhat more accountable for this than people have given him credit for, but he did straight up say last night, hey, it is my fault. I'm the coach. That's a message that I think, and I'm not here to defend him for this. I, I think you haven't heard that as much because I think he has believed people assumed that because it's something we've said on this show for, for weeks now or whatever. If you're going to look for fault, yeah, that's that's where it ultimately comes talking about players and why it's not, you know, why wins and losses are, are occurring or not occurring is explaining what's going on. But I think most coaches and Bruce Weber is one of them understand at the end of the day, if you're going to have a two and 15 or two and 16 big 12 basketball season, that's your fault. You're the head coach. 
and he does have to be held accountable for it, which I'm sure he is in the expectations next year, do probably continue to get higher as this season continues to get worse. Unfortunately, that's on a low note. I will still wrap up this edition of KSO today. Look for more coverage coming from Derek Young and Grant Flanders of our trip to Colorado to see four prospects in a day at Boulder and Greenwood Village, Colorado it was. We still have a Pro Day video coming from Flanders to kind of show you what happened there as well. And then more recruiting coverage in a written form from Derek from what we learned on the trip recently. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. If you don't subscribe to the YouTube channel, I'll say it again. Please do hit that red subscribe button for us. We would sure appreciate it if you're not a KSO subscriber and are considering it, even though we're coming into the off seasons, I think you'll still find value in it. We're going to travel. I don't want to say America. That seems like a bit of an exaggeration, but we'll travel the region pretty hard um, for camps like we did last summer throughout throughout this area. Last summer, we were, went from, I think, Illinois to Texas um, St. Louis and a couple of states to each side for this. So we'll continue to do that and bring you great coverage throughout the off season. Again, appreciate you listening. I hope you have a great day and we will talk to you tomorrow.